to Idaho, where hundreds of high school students walked out of classes to protest a plan to lay off public school teachers and curtail their rights to collective bargaining. One of the student leaders behind the walkout was Johnny Saunders, a 17-year-old debate student at Timberline High School in Boise. Uh, Johnny's become um, a, an Internet sensation after video was posted online of him speaking at a rally in Boise last month. I know we have a tough time parting with our money to pay for teachers, and I know the dirty word here in this state is taxes. I know we can't afford to pay for our children's future. I understand that. We're all too little caught up in buying another car to raise our taxes. I understand that. No, no, I get it. somewhere else. But the thing is that we need to pay for a society that we live in. Teaching is not just another job in this society. It's the way our future is shaped, and it's the way the next generation is raised. That was 17-year-old high school student Johnny Saunders from Boise, Idaho, joining us now by Democracy Now! video stream. Why did you lead this walkout, Johnny? Uh, just a clarification, I didn't necessarily lead the walkout. The project was a different uh, student. It was uh, Tyler Hansinger of Boise High who started it. I just m extended the branch over to my high school, Timberline High. But the answer to why we, why we started or why we necessarily had a walkout is to show that students do indeed oppose this bill and that there's no real student I, that I've met that, uh, that uh, supports it except for the students of businessmen or uh, students of parents that necessarily support it because it benefits their industry. Um, the a general attitude of students today is that we're kind of caught in the crosshairs, so to speak, that we are being blamed by politicking senators, that we are the ones that are being abused by our teachers or something like that. And we just wanted to show that it was our free will and we chose to oppose the bill. It wasn't the evil teachers that were brainwashing us, that uh, we had read the bill and we opposed what it said. Mm -hmm. Um, can you talk about the education system? You talked about—you um, spoke against merit pay, uh, which is a very—there's a very big movement for this all over the country, saying the plan would ultimately lead to teachers um, only teaching to tests. Why? Well, the system of merit pay, um, it's not a flawed system. I understand that uh, people respond to incentives, but the incentive in merit pay is the incorrect one. When you have standardized testing, especially math tests in particular and, uh, and tests like that, that are the only metric of how student progress is measured, the uh, teacher can give up on their creative curriculum. Um, teaching is should be, at least it comes down to the philosophy of what you think education should be, whether it should be kids memorizing facts or whether it should be a teacher that teaches their kids to function in the real world. And what merit pay does is it incentivizes teachers to, uh, quote, drill and kill um, the test answers or sometimes they will it, – it, it literally gives them an incentive just to increase test scores and so they can um, – not blaming any teacher of being dishonest, but it does incentivize cheating. It incentivizes um, – not going off curriculum, because if the second you step off curriculum, that's another $1,000 you lose off your paycheck if you're not uh, drilling and uh, making kids memorize exactly what's on the curriculum, uh, then you'll end up losing money. And that's a very powerful motivator, as the people who pass the bill know. Um, it's, the, it's just that the political reality of what merit pay does is very different than the lofty rhetoric of rewarding teachers for being good teachers. Yeah, and it just turns into a negative system that turns into rote memorization. Johnny every time. Saunders, I want to thank you for being with us. We've come to the end of our show, student activists at Timberline High School in Boise, Idaho.